His word, and if he say, if he spoke in your what in your life, all you gotta do is believe in what he says. Because if he says whatever he says, he will see it to accomplishment. Yeah, you're a man of your word. Yeah.
said it, we believe it. Mm -hmm. If you say I'm rich and not poor, if you said it, we believe it. You're a man, you're a man of your word. Oh, 
nyo mate kune kene nante Omu kwa no kwe
for me. Father, you've got great things. Now remember what you've done for me. When I remember where you got me from. Now remember what you've done for me. When I remember about the brother. Now remember what you've done.
thank you Jesus we have no doubt that you are working it out doesn't matter what we're facing now we will worship you with every breath in us, oh God. Father, may you receive a worship. We are here to declare that we will see a victory. We will see a victory. For you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Thank you, Jesus. Knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Oh, my God will never fail. I'm gonna see your victory. I'm gonna see your victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Your victory, I'm gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to you, love. Hey, it belongs to you, Jesus. Let's sing together. There is power, there's power in the mighty name of Jesus every war he wages he will win I'm not backing down from any giant I know how this story ends yes I know how this story ends everybody I'm gonna see you I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory, my God. turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you can echo with us and say you take you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good hey you take lord you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it one more time hey you take lord you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it you turn Victory, I'm gonna see your victory for 
Father, that we are more than overcomers in you. Thank you, Father, that you have won the victory for us. We praise you, Father, that in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, we became victorious. We thank you, Lord, that you have given your victory to us so that we can be... so that we can rule and reign in this earth. So we can see your promises manifest. So we can see your goodness in our lives. So we can see your goodness in our lives. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's give a hand clap for our choir. Thank you guys so much. Not only do you look beautiful, but you also sing well. So that's, you have two things going right there. And our musicians, thank you guys. Amen. So my name is Madison Busula. Sorry, you can please be seated. It's good to be with you this evening. Um, I want to thank the choir because you sang several songs in English and because I don't know Luganda, I was, I was very happy. <laughs> I thought maybe you knew that I was speaking tonight. <laughs> no, but I, I'm just joking. I'm actually, I, I want to learn Luganda. I, I bought a book just a few days ago with some basic Luganda words and things, the vowels, the adjectives, those things, so... Pray for me. I need grace. <laughs> I told Douglas, I think maybe in the evenings for a few hours you should only talk to me in Luganda. Douglas is my husband. He's seated there. <laughs> 
Nagambi or Mwami Wang and he said, Mimu, you get a Kunang, Muruganda, or Karokanga to Zamuruzo. But I'm worried that might cause strife. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, we'll see. <laughs> But it's good to be with you this evening, and I want to be sharing with you a little bit about God's will for our lives. Um, so I want to start in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 17. Ephesians 5:17 says, "Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is." So we know that if it says that we're unwise to not understand the will of the Lord, then wisdom would be understanding the will of God for us. And I think this is something that's, that's important to know, that there is a purpose on, for our lives. We weren't just created to live, to die, and then, you know, we do, we work, maybe we get married, we have children in between, but there's no real purpose to it. No, we were created for a specific purpose. There is a specific will that God has for us. And you know, as long as we can go without knowing the will of God for our lives, we will. As long as we can go without knowing the will of God for our life, we will. I think sometimes as Christians, we kind of have this idea that the will of God will happen to us accidentally. Like as we go through life and make our decisions that somehow we'll stumble onto the right path that God has for us. And you know, that's not true. As much as God is a sovereign God, God is not in control of us. He gave, he gave us free will so just like we can choose salvation or reject salvation, we can also choose to follow God and His will for our lives or choose not to. But there is a choice involved. Is that making sense a bit? Amen. Okay. Um, and then it's important to know as well that there is the general will of God for your life versus the specific will of God for your life. The general will versus the specific. So what, what do I mean by that? Simply what I mean is that we, we know from the word of God generally what God's will for our life is. For example, we know that God wants relationship with us. Uh, it says in John 17:3 that this is eternal life, that we may know Him. We know that God desires for us to prosper, to be, to be financially, have abundance in our finances. We know that God wants us to be healthy. He doesn't want us to be sick. 
We know that we were made in his image, created to be like him. He's called us to be a witness in Acts 1.8, to cast out demons and heal the sick in Matthew 10, verse 8. So when I'm speaking about the general will of God, this is what I'm referring to. This is something that no matter what God specifically has called you to, these are promises regarding your life. Amen. Amen. So we know that the, the general will of God, I think we are all familiar with. So the specific will of God refers to the plan that God has for you individually. What you were put on this earth to do. And like I said, I want to make sure that we know that the first thing that we are called to do is be in relationship with Him. That's our priority. And the specific will of God is something that He will speak to you. Individually. And it will be confirmed in his word and by people around you like your pastor, things like that. But you will know it personally. So if you tell me God's told, called you to be a witch doctor, I'm going to tell you, no, that's not God. Why? Because it says, in, because we know that's contradictory to God's word, right? So how many of you believe that you know the specific will for your life? You, you know, with 100%, this is what God has put me on this earth to do. You know, I would, you don't have to put your hand up. I don't want you to feel like, man, I, I don't know. I, I need to put my hand up because I don't want these people to think that I'm not godly. But I really don't know everything. Let me just... No, I, I don't want anybody to feel condemned or pressured. Most of, the, most of the time, the way God speaks to us, the specific will for our life is one step at a time. Like, for instance, in my life, I'm originally from the United States. Um, and you know when I started seeking the Lord about God what, what is your will for my life what did you put me on this earth to do if he would have told me right away you're going to go to Uganda I probably would have fainted I would have been terrified I would not have been happy about it. It would not have been a good revelation from the Lord. But God reveals things to us in steps, like I said. My first step, because God told me to go to Karis Bible College. And from there, he's continued to reveal the next step to me. Why? Watch. Because God is gracious, and he knows if he revealed his whole plan for me, that it would probably kill me. And I, and I wouldn't have the faith for it. It would just be fear. 
So let's talk some tonight about how to find the specific will of God for your life. And it's very simple. It's very, it's not something that is so complicated. You have to fast for 90 days. Then you, go ahead. And then you have to spend 72 hours praying in tongues. And then you have to be quiet for 10 hours and then you will hear God's voice. No, that's not it. God is a good God. He's a gracious God. And His word and His gospel is simple. Amen. Amen. And we read in that first verse that we read tonight, Ephesians 5.17, that yeah. it's wisdom for us to seek the will of God, to understand God's will for us. God is not hiding himself from us. He's not hiding his plan for our life from us. It says in Jeremiah 29:13, "You shall seek me and you shall find me when you seek me, you shall, when you search for me with all of your heart." 2913 When we truly put it in our in our hearts we have that desire to seek the Lord to know him to know his will for us We will find it God will reveal himself to us and in that process of him revealing himself he'll reveal to us what we're supposed to do. Let's go to Romans 12.2. We can start with one. And again, we're, we're talking about how to find the specific will of God for our lives. So it says, Romans 12:1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Here, you okay. So there are two steps here that we see to finding and proving God's will, God's good, perfect, and acceptable will for our lives. The first step is found in the first verse here. It says, it says present your bodies as a living sacrifice. So what does it mean to be a living sacrifice? It means that you've completely submitted your will, your desires to the Lord. You have sacrificed what you want, what you desire, what your plans are, what you think would be good to do to the Lord. 
No sadaka ebyo byo yagala byo yayanira plan zo no ziwaye likatona no mugamu kama katibwe mukama. A living sacrifice says God I'll go anywhere I'll do anything I'll be anything for you. Sadaka na mukwe kugamba mukama ni wade jori nja kugenda yo najo nyagala ngende nja kola chona kululo. And that may sound extreme but it says this is your reasonable service. Wana gama nti wo kolecho ye sadaka yo it doesn't say this is your this is a hard service or this is difficult service. This says reasonable. <laughs> so we know that if God is telling us to do this, it's possible. It's possible to submit our will to the Lord. To become that living sacrifice. To say, I will go anywhere, I will do anything, I will be whatever you want me to be, Lord. So in that, in, in that state, as a living sacrifice, you're surrendering, again, all of your plans, all of your thoughts, all of your intentions. You're saying, I, I'm putting those to the side. God, I'm choosing to do whatever you want me to do. So that's what it means to be a living sacrifice. So that's step number one. Uh, so, so step number two is found in verse two. It says, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the first step is becoming a living sacrifice. But being that living sacrifice isn't enough in itself. Okay. Because if we say that, okay, Lord, I'm a living sacrifice, I'll do whatever you want, I'll be whatever you want. If we have that attitude, but we don't know the word of God, we can be greatly misled. So say um, somebody diagnosed you with cancer. Pardon? Say someone diag say a doctor diagnosed you with cancer. So if you're a living sacrifice, but you don't you haven't transformed your mind to know that God wants me well. You could think, well, maybe God gave me this cancer to be an example to someone, to teach me a lesson. All of those lies from the enemy. And because you're a living sacrifice, you've said, God, I'll do whatever you want me to do. You could accept something that's from the devil because we haven't renewed our minds to the word of God. Is that making sense? So, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. So finding the specific will of God for your life is as simple as that. It's coming to that point where you become a living sacrifice. You cast away your wants, your desires. And you get into the word and start studying it and start transforming your mind by renewing it to the word of God. 
Katolono noda mchigamu cha katonda nota niko kuchisoma o kuchusa evilo uzobyo ngoviza bujangu koze se chigamu cha katonda. And it says that the result of this is that we may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Katia gamba evibara viechu fwe kwe kubera ngatute gera okwagala kwa katonda okulunji era okutukiri deli obulambu wa fi. So that's the result of these first two steps. Now, let me just use my life as an example. I'm sure many of you have heard my story before, but you're going to hear it again. You're welcome. Um, but, I'm joking, but I want to give it because it's a good illustration of this process. Not that I've done this perfectly. No, but at least I've been willing to try. <laughs> so when I was 18, and, um, and I was in high school, I was about to graduate. And I was looking at the different universities I wanted to go to. I was very good in school and I enjoyed studying I enjoyed reading and, and learning and so I was really I was looking forward to going to university and continuing to, to learn but I, when, I, when I turned 18 and as I got into my final time in high school I really felt the Lord beginning to tell me that he wanted me to go to a Christian college. And Christian colleges in the States, not everywhere in the world, but the Christian colleges in the States, usually their academic side, their, the universities aren't so good. The academic side is a, a bit poor. Does that make sense? I don't mean to be critical, but that's generally just the way it is. Sorry. <laughs> So, uh, so I, be, I began to hear the Lord speak this to me. And really, I had just began to start seeking the Lord for myself at this point in time in my life. I, had been, I was born again from a very early age, and I was raised in church, but I didn't begin to take my, my personal walk with the Lord seriously until around that time I was 16, 17, 18. So when I, when I heard the Lord speak this to me, I fought him on it. I, I took it upon myself to inform God that no, you're wrong. I, I need to go to a, a real university so I can get a good job and earn money, get a, you know, have, provide for my family, all of these things. And so I really, I struggled with this decision. But at the end of the day, when I, after a few weeks of, of, of searching for Christian schools, I found um, an, a, a university in Oklahoma that was a, a Christian college, but it was, still had a somewhat good academic program, so I visited there. Sorry, Oklahoma? What? University. <laughs> University. 
So I, I went there. I decided, okay, God, you know, I'll go to this Christian university. It'll be fine. It, you know, this is where I'll go. So I decided that. And then God told me, no, I want you to go to Karis Bible College. Kati, when I langa masumo gayo go marunjing gayo yanja ufunyo gabara. Nengi na masuga mukane muga akari mukama kanjoin kanyende negate kweno university. Mukana ngamba neda sikuaga leyo jagalo gende we gate ku Karis Bible College. And Karis Bible College just studies the Bible. There's no academic program whatsoever. Kati mukaris vaso mabia by bolivio kati mulevi no via. So going there meant that I wouldn't graduate with a degree. I wouldn't, if going to Karis meant that I wouldn't graduate with a degree. Mm. So to me that meant, okay, if I, God, if I go to Karis, after I'm done studying the Bible, how am I going to get a job? I'm going to go to these employee, employers and give them this certificate that says, I studied the Bible for two years. <laughs> Hire me. So really, I, I again, I was in this process of surrendering what my desires, my thoughts, what I thought was best for my life to the Lord. I, so I, but finally, God won, and I decided to go to Karis Bible College. And I was even, but even though I had agreed with God to go, I was like somehow ashamed. <laughs> I wouldn't, I didn't tell my friends where I was going to university. Uh, university. I was just like, how am I going to tell these people that I'm not even going to study anything? I'm just going to study the Bible. But good thing I decided that, you know, God, I'm going to trust you. Even if, though it doesn't make sense to me, I'm going to do what you've told me to do. And so when I did that, and, uh, I, I moved across the country. Uh, yeah, I moved, I moved across the country to go to, to Karis Bible College. And as I was there, I kept questioning God. Okay, God, why did you bring me to Bible College? I was still pressing him with that question of, God, what am I going to do after this? Because my parents had been in the ministry, I had seen how it was for them, and I knew I don't want to be in the ministry, God. What are we doing after, after Bible school? And so, again, I just, I got to a point where the Lord told me basically to calm down. And to seek him, Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So I calmed down a little bit. And I started doing part two of the scripture. I started getting my mind transformed by the word of God. For five days a week, for four hours a day, I was, I was in class learning about the Bible, learning about who I was in Christ, learning about my authority, learning about all of these things. 
Natani kokubera mu classi nga soma bible mm so as i was doing that i finished my first year i still didn't know what i was supposed to do with my life and going into my second year I, I still really didn't know what I was supposed to do with my life but in your second year at this Bible college they, they tell you to go for a mission trip that you have to go for a mission trip and one of the options for the places you could go was Uganda. And I, the Lord had been speaking to me a little bit about Uganda. Uganda. And so when I saw that mission trip listed, I knew that that's where God wanted me to go. And again, um, to wrap this up, because I'm running out of time for this evening, but I, I got chosen to go on the mission trip to Uganda. I came here in 2016. I met Bishop Herbert. I went on a mission trip to Rakai to the Glory of Christ project there. I, I did all of these things here for two weeks ministry. And and after that trip, I really, I really began to know that this was the, the path that God was directing me on. This was my next step in his specific will for my life. And, you know, it has come to pass. By step by step, as I've listened to the Lord, he has shown me what to do. I went for mission school in my next year of Bible college. And miraculously, I got to come back to Uganda again, and I was in Jinja for five weeks. And and then I moved here in 2018 to work with the Bible College here. And through that, I met my husband. And I've... And I really, I've seen the goodness of God in my life. I've seen the goodness of God in my life. And I know, like I said, again, many times when, we, when, when God is speaking to us, when God is revealing the will of God, for, the will, His will for our life, it's step by step. You know, if, if at the beginning of 2018 you would have told me that I was going to marry my husband Douglas, I would have said you were crazy. I thought Douglas hated me for the first six months that I knew him. I was convinced he was going to send me back to the U.S. because, anyway, because he thought I was this, you know, silly American girl. If God would have shown me any of this, uh, even speaking in front of people, I couldn't speak in front of people. I learned that by going to Bible college. I, would, I was so afraid of speaking in front of people. I would write down every single word that I was going to say and I used to read it, and I wouldn't look at the audience. I would just read, and then when I was done, I would go and sit down. 
nga nebi kambo vya ngendo kogera mbi wandi kamu wansi nebi soma nga siba tuinde na ba tunolira wembe maliriza nineta ambuda ningenda so if God were to tell me that I would be ministering to people I, I couldn't have handled it kati singa katonda ya ngambira wawo ntingenda kuwerele za ngamu batu sandi 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 take it this but it's by continuing in his word it's by continuing to, to keep myself as that living sacrifice devoid of what I want devoid of, of what I think is best for my life and it's the same thing even now to this day it's the same thing of what I'm doing for, to hear the Lord about my next step this is not something that you do once and you have it all mapped out for the rest of your life. It's a continuous journey that you have with the Lord. You know, and I want to encourage you there may be dreams and visions and God has given you this big plan that you know that you're supposed to do. Or maybe he's given you that first step like he gave me, but it doesn't seem to be working out. You know, I just want to encourage you. I was going to talk, I have a lot of things I wanted to talk about tonight, but I wanted to talk about the life of Joseph. God gave Joseph those dreams and that vision that he had for Joseph's life when he, Joseph was 17. But it was 22 years before those dreams came to pass. Twenty-two years. It is through faith and patience that we inherit the promises of God. That's in Hebrews 6.12. And I want to encourage you whether you have that big picture like, like God showed Joseph, that big vision, that big dream, or you have that first step in front of you. Step out in faith. Knowing that God is with you. Knowing that as long as you're continuing in, to renew your mind to his word. Continuing to keep yourself in that position of a living sacrifice. You can know that you will not be disappointed. Like I said, for me, God shows me step by step. And even between those steps, there's, there have been times where it feels like, when I, especially when I first learned that I, was, I knew God was supposed to, I, I was supposed to go to Uganda, uh, it seems like it, it could never happen. It's, I had family members telling me that I was crazy. Uh, you know, I had people telling me that, you know, if you go to Uganda, you know that you're going to die, right? You, you're, you know, they would, just, they would just say, well, who do you think you are? You're barely keeping your life together in the U.S. How could you move to Africa? But I knew what the Lord had told me. And so no matter, no matter what I was, I was facing, I knew that, man, this is the way that I know that God's telling me to go. So I continued to take those small but steady steps towards that vision. And 
And, and by holding on to those promises of the Lord, holding on to that word from God, in time with that patience, pa all patience is is faith over an extended period of time. So as we, as you, as I continued to, to keep that faith over time, I saw those promises of God, what God spoke to me, come to pass. And I know that you will too. God is not slack concerning his word for us. So again, I would encourage you to go home and meditate. Think about those scriptures in Romans 12, 1 and 2. Because I know as you continue in them, you will know God's specific plan for your life. He will reveal it to you. Amen. So thank you. I am out of time. I've even gone over. I apologize. But thank you for allowing me to share with you this evening. If anybody has their offering or you want, need an envelope, please put up your hand. Zongere, Mulinya Yasu, Amin. Kati, Bobanga was the Nechwe Wayo, Guero in Ochuayo, Waniko Mukonogo, Vakabis Vajakue Bassa. I got a bassa taken one, Guru Mukono. Okay. So let me pray over you, over your offerings as we, uh, before we go. Father, Kanku Sabide. Father, we thank you for this evening that we've had together. Father, I thank you that you are a good God. I thank you that you have a good plan for every single purpose, every single person here. A specific purpose, a specific will that only that you put them on this earth to fulfill. And Father, I thank you that as they, as they make themselves living sacrifices before you, and as they purpose in their heart to renew their minds to, the, to your word, I thank you, Lord, that they are going to see your will come to pass in their life. And they are going to know for certain this is why God put me here. This is what God wants me to do. And they will live life confidently with that knowledge that they are in the perfect will of God. So, Lord, we thank you for that. And I thank you, Lord, for the offerings. I thank you, Lord, for the seed that's being sown. I thank you, Lord, that it is pressed down, shaken together, overflowing, coming back to them a hundredfold in this life. Because we know that it's a blessing to be able to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I don't know. Are there any announcements? Or